to go from that to seventh at the Olympic Games is just so impressive. And it's really hard to see past her uh, for the individual title, despite her saying she's only at 70 to 80 percent fitness, apparently. But Sarah Healy there for Ireland has picked up so many medals on the track through the age groups. It'd be great to see her add a cross country medal here on her home ground. The Spanish team there as well. We've seen some good runs from them. Great to see so many nations represented here in this under-23 women's race. Yeah, it is a loaded field of quality. And obviously, Nadia Battacletti, an athlete who was seventh in the Olympic 5,000 metres. The women's under-23, 6,000 metre race. 59 of them set off down that hill here in Fingal, Dublin. And no surprise to see Nadia Battacletti in that blue of Italy in the centre and Sarah Healy towards the front already and I guess if you're Nadia Batacletti Henny are you gonna push this from the outset and stamp your class are you gonna like you said she was probably downplaying her fitness are you gonna perhaps just wait it out and maybe make a move later in the race it'd be interesting because her victory in Lisbon which was emphatic and, and so entertaining to watch it wasn't that dominant it was her Luca and Machado really until if you remember the steep downhill in Lisbon they were all running together and then it was only in the last sort of 800 that Batacletti pulled away from the rest of the field but she's moved on so much in the last two years um, uh, she says she's only at 70 to 80 percent fitness uh, some of her early season cross country <laughs> form would suggest otherwise uh, but we'll see sometimes you want to stay out of trouble uh, sometimes you don't want to get caught up in the field with these with these tight turns and um, sometimes maybe you want the record winning victory <laughs> something like that the, the biggest margin everyone's anyone's ever won by uh, but we'll have to see they've got four 1500 meter laps and Batacletti in the driving seat at the moment. You talked in that men's race uh, about the attitude of the field to Charles Hicks as a favourite. That's going to be even stronger in this women's under-23 race. They are all going to be looking at Nadia Batacletti. And to be honest, they have to be running for silver here. I think so. And I think anyone, whenever the move does come, and we would expect it to be a very strong move whenever Batacletti decides to go, it would be perhaps foolhardy for anyone to tr truly try to live with it because she is an athlete, on paper at least, obviously these things can go different ways, but on paper, Nadia Batacletti there in the centre of your shot is a class above everyone else here. She would be for sure a gold medal contender if she decided to line up in the senior race today. She's decided to stick to her own age category. She hasn't done what Jakob Inger Brixen has done. She's decided to stick, try and win the under 23 gold and all that can come in the future but it looks very hard to see her being stopped today. Clara Lucan, if there is an athlete who is capable of living with her for the longest time, it would likely be Clara Lucan in that struck very red, dyed red hair there in second, the Slovenian kit. It's, uh, you certainly wouldn't miss her. The Slovenian kit's always been one of the most easily identifiable with the luminous green they carry, um, but she is a fantastic athlete. 15.23 for 5,000 metres, 8.48 for 3,000 metres, the European under-20 5,000 metre champion in 2019, where she beat Nadia Batacletti, but those tables were turned this year at the European under-23 champs, where Batacletti beat Lucan to gold over 5,000 metres. I was watching back that race in Lisbon and it was Machado made a big move, pulled the medalist away from the rest of the field. And for me, Clara Lucan just missed Batacletti's move. Batacletti made a very aggressive move, move on a technical part of the course. And I felt that Lucan, she might have kicked herself after that race. So maybe today she's going to be concentrating really on, on not letting Nadia Blatacchetti get away from her. She's got nothing to lose by, by running with her. But you can see Amelia Quirk there as well. She represented Great Britain at the European Indoor Championships as a senior, and she led that final. Uh, so if you've got the guts and the confidence to lead a senior indoor final um, in what was probably her third indoor race of her career, um, I'm not surprised at all to see Amelia Quirk there at the lead. She doesn't, she's not comfortable in the pack as well, Amelia Quirk. She likes to run out front, so not surprised at all to see the British athlete taking up the lead early in the race. Yeah, no big move at this early stage on the first of four laps. It's just you can see it breaking apart a little there mid-pack, but what we have probably 30 at least or so all within contention here of the front pack, the main peloton as it were, and I think everyone really is just waiting for that move of Maddy Batacletti. No one wants to make it themselves because they know Batacletti is going to cover it, and they don't want to go breaking the wind for an athlete of her class. They'll all just try and sit in, and when the move does come, they'll get in pole position and they'll try their best to follow, but on paper we think that might be a futile challenge here in Fingal Dublin. 
hard to, you never know, do you? You never know who's had a cold, who's had a small injury, who's had a sleepless night with noise at the hotel. Anything can happen. That, yeah, that's why we love sport, and hopefully anyone watching loves sport. Um, but I would be very su surprised to see uh, anything other than Nadia Batacletti put her foot down at some point. They're just completing one lap of four of this course here on the Sport Island campus. And it is Batacletti, Lucan, and Amelia Quirk at the lead at the moment. Yeah, it's still quite a relatively sedate pace for athletes of this calibre up front, and you can easily tell that by the, the clustering of athletes. Look at the, the amount of tricolours. I think the local shops must have been sold out recently because the Irish fans have come decked out and they're cheering on Sarah Healy here, who's this is certainly above the distance she'd be comfortable with. She's a 202 800 metre runner, a 407 1500 metre runner. You can see her sitting in there in those orange spikes just behind that leading line. She's in about sixth, seventh position at the moment, but. Uh, Nothing much happening up front as Amelia Quirk leads Clara Lucan and Izzy Fry through the first 1500 metre lap in 4.54. It was impressive to see Sarah Healy take second at the Senior Irish Championships over an 8000 metre course. Um, it should be, very, be a very welcome reduction down to 6,000 metres here for, for Sarah Healy. But you're right, she's still very much a track runner, so impressive over that 815. Uh, but all indications so far show she's wintering really well. Certainly, yeah, and Sarah Healy is very much at home on the mud. I remember at an Irish Schools Championships years ago, she lost in a, a horrendous condition. She left one of her shoes inside a big uh, mud bath and ended up running the majority of the race with one spike. And she didn't just beat the best school girls in Ireland, she beat them by about 30 or 40 seconds. So Sarah Healy is, has form on the mud as well, at, at the, certainly at domestic level, even if at European level she is most accomplished on the track. And right now she's sitting in about sixth place, just tracking that leading pack. Well, I was looking back at previous events because that's what I like to do, and I like the European Championships. But Tilburg, for me, I think Amelia Quirk and Sarah Healy fell. Uh, probably about midway through that race, we talked about how fast and furious and short that under-20 race was. And for me, Amelia Quirk and Sarah Healy uh, would have had a shout at an individual medal on that day, and, and that was disrupted by falls. And, you know, perhaps if we had Sarah Healy in an under-20 cross-country uh, European medal, we'd be, we'd be more confident of her converting that to an under-23, uh, as she has done on the track. But it'll be, it'll be interesting to see. Absolutely, but Amelia Quirk looks to be... The most interested in pushing this pace along, we see Nadine Donegan come through there for Ireland. She is actually the girlfriend of four years of Darren McElhenney, and it'll be an interesting dynamic for the two of them today because as she was warming up, McElhenney was running to silver and indeed team gold in that race. And normally, as they said, the women go second or women go first at the European cross country. This year it's reversed, so they, they both said that it's actually a nice change that McElhenney gets to get out there in a supporter's role now and cheer on his girlfriend. She's back in about 25th position, but up front it's Amelia Quirk and perhaps. For the first time, Nadia Badakledi just applying a little bit of pressure around that turn, and no, she settled in again. I spoke too soon. I do wonder about that. That you can see that official there uh, standing in front of a lamppost. He is almost the cushion for the lamppost. Uh, maybe someone to catch a faller. Uh, that that corner really is tricky. These athletes are making it look okay because they're so competent on this mud and on these twists and turns. But um, you really shouldn't underestimate the, the technical aspects of this course. It's not as technical as Lisbon a couple of years ago, or courses like our house in Denmark that we had for the World Junior Championships. Sorry, World Cross Country Championships. But it's still pretty technical. Absolutely. Um, and but they all appear to be handling it very well and you can see it's so open at the moment that no one's really applying big pressure up front Amelia Quirk probably the most interested a two two time English under 20 or national under 20 champion and um, she's coming back off a stress fracture and great to see her back running so well here the Mick Woods coach that she's leading the battle here at the moment and could well be leading the British team to gold but in terms of the individual race I think everyone in there you can see Lucan, Healy, Machado they're all just waiting and watching Nadia Badakledi and saying after you essentially. Amelia Quirk she trains like this as well she trains where I live uh, she just goes to the front and just pushes and pushes and uh, she's asking questions of this field and I wonder if you're someone like Nadia Batacletti you're going oh <laughs> I don't want to go hard yet I was going to relax for a couple of laps uh, but Amelia Quirk not not happy to let anything go uh, at a sedate pace she's not she's got a good finish but not a, you know not a Sarah Healy finish so Amelia Quirk will want to keep this race going fast certainly will and that we haven't really mentioned yet but as quietly 
introduced herself there to the leading pack on the left is Manon Trapp of France. She's run half marathon. She's only 21. She's run a 75 minute half marathon. 15.52 for 5k, 9.05 for 3k. And she was seventh at the European Under 20 Championships on the track over 3k two years ago and was the winner at the French Championships recently. So look out for Manon Trapp there. She is just sidling up on the inside of the course as we see them now it's actually the outside as they go around the next turn but Amelia Burke still leading the way this is all to play for what do we have 10 athletes or so just starting to separate themselves from the field here still a pretty big group though at halfway into this race and you can see that cluster behind them as well and I think you're right to highlight Manon Trap um, as an athlete that will want this to go fast now she won't want it to, to be slow any longer uh, and to me I have to say it probably is slow if you've got a group of this state of this size at this half at this stage, halfway through the race. Uh, so like Amelia Quirk has been at the lead, but perhaps not pushing on as much pressure as maybe we thought. But as we reach the halfway point, I think it will be interesting to see people's race plans pan out. Absolutely, the Italians also packing very well. And I think we didn't see much because she's kind of been buried in that pack, but Anna Arnaudo there, she's just behind Sarah Healy. She's running very well at the moment. And um, there's three Italians now in the top eight or so, but Anna Arnaudo is a, 15.39 5k runner which certainly puts her into the kind of metal contention category here we're all waiting for that move from Badicletti but it looks like right now maybe that 70-80% fitness thing she mentioned is still playing on her mind and she thinks wait I'm gonna wait I'm gonna wait but she is such a good athlete she finished with an absolutely lightning finish to make that Olympic 5000 meter final I think it was a way below 250 last kilometer she ran in her heat to catch up and uh, she finished with a flying finish and actually as the under 20 champion at Lisbon two years ago Nadia Badikledi she beat the senior champion from Lisbon two years ago Yasmin Chan at the Olympics they finished I think it was seventh and eighth in that Olympic 5000 meter final so there you go you see the form of the European cross country championships coming to the fore at Olympic level with the under 20 it's a, it's a signal of what a talent Nadia Badikledi is that she stepped up and beat the European four time senior European cross-country champion at the Olympics. Yes, certainly, you can see there was a mammoth effort there from Carrie Hughes, a great Briton, to get herself into this group. That gives us almost three Brits in that top group, but it's Italy with three athletes in that top group at the moment. And what a year Italy are having as an athletics nation, those five gold medals at the Olympic Games. They topped the medal table at the under-23 European Championships. And you can see at the moment, we've still got Great Britain in first, only just though ahead of Italy, with France in third. And for me, that uh, Italian team is looking stronger than the British team at the moment. I think has been favored perhaps by just those positions as they go over a timing mat, uh, rather than really reflecting the strength um, of having those three athletes up there in this top group with two French athletes as well and almost three Brits. Yeah, and the gloves are quite literally off for Amelia Quirk at the moment. She just, he, at that point of the race where you start to heat up, she was back in about third or fourth place. She ripped them off her hands and threw them to the side and then quickly moved to the front fitting the metaphor that it is and continues to apply pressure to this field but it's not really breaking up yet we've got about 12 11 12 athletes in this lead pack the german there also like just hanging off the back Quirk is applying the pressure but badicletti is waiting waiting all the time waiting and i think we saw this last lap as well she moved to the front just through this tricky technical muddy section i think more this isn't really a move to apply pressure it's just like you see in a marathon where people move before the water station it's just to keep herself out of trouble and make sure she has a clean running line into these bends she is still continuing to wait and i think at this stage it's going to be all saved up for a big last lap by nadia Batacletti. But for me, Clara Lucan has done nothing but sit a, a metre behind Nadia Batacletti. She's glued to her. You can see her looking down in front of her. I wonder if she's thinking, how long can I hold on to that familiar Italian woman ahead of me? They've had so many battles over the age groups. And uh, who knows, if Clara Lucan is 100% fit, she's an Olympian from this summer. Uh, could she be one to challenge a 70 or 80% fit uh, Nadia Batacletti? Absolutely. And France packing well there. And athlete we haven't mentioned, Margot Siraki is in there 32 49 10k runner she's just hanging out the back in about eighth or moment she's trying to keep herself in that medal contention race and also keep herself in those team positions but it's coming down to the athletes that we thought it might Sarah Healy Nadia Badicletti Mariana Machado Clara Lucan 
and then Manon Trap of France. It looks to be these five who are showing the most interest at the moment. Amelia Quirk, we've seen her fade back a little bit at times, but she's just an absolute warrior in the way she runs. She just keeps showing up at the front and keeps... And now Izzy Fry starting to move forward there, just loops around her teammate and slots in. And I know her coach was quite confident that she can get in this medal battle as well here today, and she is certainly showing that to good effect at the moment. But I think everyone still waits and waits and waits and wonders when is Nadia Badikledi going to move? And keep an eye on the team standings because I reckon Britain, Italy and France, they've all got three contenders near the front. Perhaps they've got two right at the front and then the one at the back is, is the one that's going to count because the highest third place finisher is the one that uh, breaks the tie. So they need to keep three people as far to the front as possible. I think we'll get another indicator of the, the team score, maybe in a two minutes, two and a half minutes. They, they give us the individual standings and then we move on to the team standings. But for me, Italy, uh, they have to be in contention now. They, they've got three in one, two, three, four, three in the top seven. Uh, whereas Britain, for me, they've just slid off that group. Uh, they will be battling it out more with France, and France have got two up there as well. Um, so it could come down to third counter for the silver and bronze, but for me, I think that gold medal could be going the way of Italy as a team. Could they do it individually and as a team? The Italians are just getting greedy at this point, aren't they? I mean, how much more do you want in 2021? You've won the Euro Football Championship, you've won the Olympic 100 metres, you've won the relay, you've won the Eurovision, and you might be winning a European Under-23 title. But a scary moment there you'll have seen for Nadia Badikledi. She just got a little trip, and that's the danger of hanging around against athletes, you know, in a big pack, going around these turns. The race could be ended in an instant, and athletes in this mod will be wearing good spikes, but a huge roar goes up as Sarah Healy comes through, but man on trap now, starting to apply pressure. She's using the old horse racing trick there. It might be a wider line running around the longer line, but it's drier ground. We see Nadia Badikledi there just clipping legs with Mariana Machado, but thankfully didn't come to harm and is still very much in this gold medal race as Manon Trap starts to turn the screw out front. That one has shaken Nadia Batacletti a bit. For me, that's like when you're running heats at a championships and you're trying to conserve energy. Something like that happens, you think, I'm done, I'm gone. Uh, I might have expected Nadia Batacletti to put a move in there, but Manon Trap uh, had the same idea and she's pushing on now. You've mentioned her half marathon strength. Uh, they've just got two kilometres left and Manon Trap has gone. This will be her kick as a road specialist and endurance specialist. She will want to get this race moving now. You can see the other women, they're going to respond to this move slowly. They will cover that move, but Man on Trap has really laid down the gauntlet in this last lap. Is Mad Nadia Badikledi in trouble? That's the big question. We hyped her up so much, but we said she said herself she played down her chances, maybe 70 or 80 percent fitness. She did run well in Spain a couple of weeks ago at the cross to Atapurka. She was 12th against some serious international senior opposition over there. But Nadia Badikledi, on paper, she's so far ahead of this field, but medals are not won on paper. And right now it looks like Nadia Badikledi, it's very hard to tell from facial expressions, but she looks like she's certainly working hard there back in fourth position. And I think if she was at her peak fitness we would not be seeing her this far back at this point in the race we should have seen her stamp her supremacy earlier than this so maybe she's just hanging on and I'm sure every meter that goes by man on trap out front Sarah Healy in second Clara Lucan in turn will be absolutely ballooning in confidence that they're still in the gold medal hunt at this point in the race as we come down to the final kilometer team standings there you can see Italy in the lead from France from Great Britain but man on trap for me she's swinging left maybe looking for that firmer ground but for the first time, Clara Lucan, she's getting involved. She's pushing on that pace. We've seen her sit behind uh, Nadia Batacletti. But Ca Clara Lucan, perhaps realising the threat might not come from the Italian Batacletti. And she needs to look at the rest of this field as well. She grits her teeth. It's a small rise out of that technical section. They'll have a few more twists and turns. But really then, it is going to be fast, flat, simple running on the way home. Not simple if you're tired for five kilometres across country. Uh, but simple in terms of technical and, and tactics and positioning absolutely and Clara Lucan is definitely shifting through the gears here at the front she is putting the athletes around her under a lot of pressure she had a she she made the Olympics this year which was a fantastic achievement but the Slovenian was very disappointed after she dropped out of the 5k in oppressive heat in Tokyo she said her body felt heavy and she was just stretched to capacity mentally and said she just started to feel completely empty and couldn't deal with the pain but she is coping superbly with the pain of cross country here in Fingal Dublin today and as she rounds this turn up the hill Nadia Badikledi on her shoulder it looks like this will be 
be the gold medal race now between the two big athletes we had picked out on paper that it might come down to. Nadia Badakledi, she's won two under 20 titles. She was the overwhelming favourite for gold at under 23 levels. We see Sarah Healy trying her best to hang on back in fifth to Mariana Machado and Manon Trapp, but looks to be fading a little at the moment. And it looks like Badakledi versus Lucan, perhaps for the gold. Man on track looks right on her limit. She's working so hard to stay in that bronze medal position. But could we see a repeat of Lisbon? Mariana Machado can get into that bronze medal position. We might have the same three medalists. But it is Lucan and Battacletti fighting it out at the front. I felt Lucan missed missed the move from Battacletti in Lisbon. She's not done that today here in Fingal, Dublin. She made that move and it was asked Nadia Battacletti to go with her. And she has and Nadia Battacletti for the first time. Looks like she's making a bid for that gold medal. She certainly does. She's a third year student in U at university in construction engineering, specializing in architecture, and she is certainly building herself one fine career in distance running at the moment. Two European under 20 titles, and it looks like Nadia Badicletti, the brilliant Italian, is on her way to gold here. She is just stretching out ahead of Clara Lucan. Mariana Machado coming up and challenging Trap for that bronze medal, but around the final turn, it is Italy's Nadia Badicletti who has struck for gold here. It is a commanding performance from the Italian. We perhaps expected her to move a little earlier in the race. She didn't. She kept her powder dry until the finish, until the last lap. But class is permanent, and Nadia Badakledi has buckets of it. It looks like Machado's going to win that battle for silver, but Lucan and her are going to dust up for that. Trap is back and forth. Sarah Healy with a good run in fifth, but there's not going to be an Irish medal here in 2021, the year of Italy for sport. It looks like Nadia Badakledi is on her way to another memorable victory here. She's done it twice at under 20 level. She'll be a fantastic senior in the years to come. But right now, it's about the under 23 race. And brilliant, brilliant, Batacletti wins it. Clara Lucan comes through for the silver, wins that battle for silver ahead of Mariana Machado. Man on trap, a brilliant run from the French woman back and forth. Sarah Healy gave it absolutely everything, but just didn't have enough to get amongst those medals today. She'll be back in the future. That was an exciting finish, Anna. That really was. Um, and perhaps now we can believe Nadia Battacletti when she says, I am only 70, 80% fit, that she had to work for that. That was not a procession. That was not an exhibition. Nadia Battacletti had to dig hard to convert herself from a junior to an under-23 medalist. Clara Lucan gave absolutely everything for the win. I thought that was going to cost her the silver medal, but she had a really strong last 100 metres to hold off Portuguese athlete Mariana Machado to give us the same medalist as we had in Lisbon been in the under 20 age groups and let's hope those three have a fantastic senior career ahead of them mariana machado there had a go at converting a bronze into a silver but had to settle for a repeat silver medal it shows whatever about nurture nature sure has a big effect effect in the results of these races because mariana machado's mum albertina machado was fifth at the world cross back in 1988 and as for our champion, Nadia Batacletti, her dad, Giuliano Batacletti, her coach, was seventh in the European cross country back in 98, helping Italy to team gold. And he was 17th in the 2001 world cross country. So I'm sure their parents, Giuliano and Albertina, they're probably here watching on very proud of what their two daughters have achieved. So Axel van Christensen, he was the only man standing at the end of his race. Uh, Nadia Batacletti, enough energy to pick up her teammate. A fantastic sixth place there for Anna Arnaldo of Italy. I think really important in those team standings. I'll try and keep abreast of those team scores, but the Italians did have three in the top 11, which might be enough for that. But, the Italy, but France, well, we'll see. Like I say, it's always tempting to try and do that maths, but I'll get it wrong. We won't attempt too much fate here, but it looks like the Italians are very well positioned in that race. It could be double gold for them. We see the official result. Four seconds was the winning margin for Nadia Badicletti. Clara Lucan takes the silver in that sprint finish from her close rival, Mariana Machada, in third. And it's nice to see that uh, Italy, Slovenia, Portugal winning their first medals of the day. So already 12 different countries have won medals at these championships, which is quite a healthy total, I think. Brilliant. And we see the team results there. And indeed, as suspected, Italy are up on top of that standings. 18 points coming home, well clear of France, packed very well, led by Manon Trapp. And then it was Britain taking the bronze.